هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos anesti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the next time of the BTS, Big Bang Theory Alls BTS vlog. So, Christos anesti, Messiah kam, and Christ is risen. It may give you a time and date stamp. We're still here. And there goes our... Uh, <laughs> the pointer is gone for the... Con for the... Uh, here we go. Brought it back. Some of the times the mouse, mouse disconnects, so if I don't know why it happened, but this does. Uh, anyways, the time and date stamp. It is 3 hours and 48 minutes into the day of Friday, May 20th, 2016. <coughs> uh, <coughs> now that I'm talking again, the cough is back. <laughs> it was fine up until just a few minutes ago, and then as I started talking, the uh, cough came back. Um... I did what I said I was going to do is take some time off. So there hasn't been much of anything going on here except for sleeping. And uh, now it's at the three, uh, about, yeah, about three, about four o'clock in the morning because it's uh, three, 50, 349, right? 349, uh, three hours and 49 minutes or 349 uh, on, uh, yeah, it's Friday, May 20th. So. Uh, it's late night. It's, well, not night. It's night because there's no sun up. <coughs> but I'm awake. <coughs> um, had some of my milk tea. Watched some of my uh, my open IPTV. Uh, watched the, the Our, Our Family Nest, Bertelli, uh, Clintus, uh, Shaytards. Now I'm at Flippin' Kate. And through the usual schedule. <coughs> uh, things are all prepped and ready to go for basically tomorrow. I do have to do food shopping tomorrow. I'll probably leave around 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'll do that around 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and when I get back, if I see if I can take two hours. So if I leave at 10 o'clock in the morning, get back around noon. Uh... Within two hours, probably two o'clock in the afternoon, that's when the uh, the adrenaline will, will the adrenaline will uh, sort of kick off. We we'll we completely off at that t time, and I'll need to go back to bed to sort of uh, deal with the fatigue issues that come after uh, the uh, two hour hike. Uh, no, well, probably I'm more likely than not take you with me. I don't know what we're going to discuss at this particular point in time. It's uh. There's a number of things on the that I have on the schedule to sort of think about and so <coughs> to run through. Uh, and I'm going to be working, uh, I'm already working in a notebook, but I'm considering a um, a second aspect of the notebook, sort of a second level. Uh, I still haven't finalized what, how I want to approach it yet, but uh, I'm still thinking about it anyway, so uh, that does take, I mean... Uh, this channel, I don't blow things up. Uh, I'm not your typical guy. <coughs> <coughs> guy channel, and this is what research is like. Research is is not for everybody. It's not uh, always swashbuckling or, or or going out to the edges of the of the universe and trying to find out. You know, it's not like Star Trek. It's not like Star Wars. It's not. Uh, uh, like you see in the movies, it's more of a mundane existence sometimes. 
followed by long hours of studying, looking for information that uh, might be there and might not be there. And anything you don't know, you, the, other thing, the, the reason why you spend long hours doing the studying is you're looking for information that you, sometimes might be there and might not be there. So, you, you know, some of the connections that I've come up with have been a result of years worth of research, years worth of notes. And sometimes the gap between understanding one point and another point can be years as well. It could be, it's not a simple, oh, I understand one thing this week and the next week something else pops up and, you know, you move your, your, your stick forward. Sometimes the, getting certain points takes a while. Uh, and this is where you do have to be patient. This is where you have to sort of uh, uh, understand that this is the real nature of research. This is what a lot of time is left out. So... Uh, and that means also tomorrow as well, the mundane has to be done. That means I probably have to do some house cleaning. Uh, clean the office, clean the different facility, parts of the facility. And that way, uh, for Sunday, Monday, get ready to do and, and work on the uh, music studio. And bring that up and along, along with the electronics bench. So the music studio and electronics bench, uh, should be functioning Monday or Monday or Tuesday, so we're back on that schedule again, and then I'll have um, to work over the rest of the week. I'll have the room next to this where, where the uh, room where I go outside. There's that desk there, um, that room where I uh, where the refrigerator where the refrigerator is. That room has to be fixed up, and then the warehouse that I come out of that's, that's connected to it. Uh, there is a machine shop in there. I have to work on the machine shop and bring that out of mothballs and get it functioning again. So, uh, yeah, fair bit of stuff to do. So, one, th one thing's finished when one thing finishes, you get success in one thing, in one area, and that's now neatly tucked away and uh, uh, functioning properly. You have to bring in more stuff, and your efficiency model begins all over again because now you have new things to sort of start fitting into the schedule. So, uh, that's the way things go. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you in the, uh, uh, next segment of, uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS Vlogs. Alright, take it easy. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the next segment of, uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS Vlog. Give you a time and date stamp. It is... 11 hours and 32 minutes into the day of... Uh, Friday, May 20th, 2016. I'm getting ready to go. Uh, I don't have much to pack up. Uh, there's no room for me to carry the camera, so I'm not going to bring the outdoor camera with me. Uh, besides, this should be a, quite an interesting walk. I didn't sleep that well last night. Well, I didn't sleep at all. I tried to sleep, but couldn't really sleep. Don't know exactly why, but uh, the result is no sleep, so I'm walking, uh, go food shopping for two hours on little or no little or no sleep. So that's kind of how things go. So as I said, the walk should be interesting. There's no real room for the camera, and so. Away we go. This, this here. I'm gonna take it up when I get to uh, where, I go, where I'm going. Pretty much sort of mundane around here the last uh, few days. Uh, that happens sometimes. It's just I'm in between projects, so, but uh, things should pick up again on uh, I think uh, Sunday. Things should pick up again. Uh, anyways, I'm off now, and I will see you when I come back.
I'm back to say the least. Uh, <laughs> let me take off my bag and uh, then I'll give you the time and date stamp. It is just about, th just, well, it's at, at 13 hours into the day of uh, Friday, May 20th, uh, 2016. Yeah. It was a good walk, but I began thinking of a number of different things. But this is, a, this is the thing about peripatetics. You're thinking, but at the same time, it's hard to talk, so it's, you know, it's like, well, should I have, should I have brought you... Uh, should I have brought you with me? Uh, uh, food shopping, so we could we could have a discussion. But part of the problem is, is that when you're having the discussion, your your mind isn't focused on necessarily some uh, focused on on another discussion. In other words, uh, typically you let your mind wander when you when you walk. And this is the sort of the peripatetic style that I've chosen. Anyways, um, so while your mind is wandering, you kind of think of different things. And it's this thinking uh, that in many ways can't actually be described because it is thought. As, as you do, so you're not, you're not going to be able to hear my thoughts as I'm walking. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. And so the end result is, uh, for, from the viewer's perspective, the end result is, oh yeah, he's just, you know, in his mind. So there's no discussion going on, it's just all quiet. Uh, but I was thinking, and uh, realized that it's time to move on from... Uh, atheism to agnosticism. Now, why am I saying that? Well, because if the fundamentals of physics, you know, uh, Newton's three laws of uh, three laws of motion, the uh, they call kinematics. Uh, if this gives you uh, the definition, in such a way of, of how the universe works. On a, on a very basic level, then you run into a problem because atheism violates the fundamentals of physics. Now, most atheists that, are, that I've talked to, I've seen, uh, they're not physicists. They they argue from they argue from the perspective of uh, evolutionary bio biology. Not certainly the case. That's certainly the case for uh, Richard Dawkins. Uh, Darwin wasn't a physicist. And so what happens is you don't really have a good answer for atheism within the realm of physics. So, it, and then when you have, when you have to consider the Heisenberg uncertainty principle from quantum mechanics, you run into further problems. And so, your discussion go, goes from the initial statement of there is no God to well maybe I don't maybe I'm not too sure if there's a God. I mean like, you can't you can't prove it one way you can't prove it another way you know either way so it leaves an uncertainty about God. Well, the problem is the term atheism is Greek and it's in it actually means no God. There's another term for 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 a belief system where you're not too sure about God. And it, 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 it falls back to belief. And this is agnosticism. And the thing is, the question is, is there enough events in history that you can go back in history, and as I said before, treating it like a black hole, looking for events that show or show an effect of a hidden environment. Uh, and that's where sort of the next direction I'll be sort of moving in 
uh, uh, some of it's going to be archaeology, some of it's going to be anthropology. Uh, the two really have to mix because uh, human culture actually explains a lot uh, in uh, how people see things. And you can also say, and then this is the question is, is that I don't think in neurology, from what I've seen so far, that they've pinpointed where culture lies uh, within the uh, neurological circuits. And the question is, okay, again, if there's something that's unseen there, just the way the black hole is, is the black hole the center of uh, a mass surrounding this, that star, the mass surrounding the star shows the signatures of uh, circling the black hole. You have uh, certain X-ray events that come out of it. There's a lot of uh, ways with the uh, with spectroscopy, you can actually start measuring that there is a, frankly, a, a black hole in the center of a particular object that you're looking at. This same method, method, the same mechanism, has to be found, or should be found, for the argument that there are parallel universes and that the spiritual universe is one aspect of these parallel universes. In other words, there's more out there, but the Let's use the original universe as, as our starting point. Let's go back into anthropology, into archaeology, and see whether or not we have this sort of hidden effect. If we can say that we have this hidden effect, we now have a better argument for M-theory, actually. So, in other words, what we have now is we have metaphysics in many ways backing up M-theory and quantum mechanics. And so what we're going to do is now is go from atheism to agnosticism the uncertainty about God, which has a large history in, 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 uh, in mankind. In, in, the, the anthropology, uh, the, the agnostic side of belief is as ancient as any form of belief. belief. So it's, it's as ancient as belief of itself. Well, atheism <coughs> it is relatively new. It's been around basically since the 1900s. Uh, it, began, it began its early beginnings in the 1800s, but it really didn't take hold uh, and becomes something more significant until the <coughs> 1900s. Then by 1945, it was dead. The, that was the end of modernism with the atomic bomb. And I'll explain this later on. Uh, why the atomic bomb, bomb killed atheism and produced uh, uh, what we call postmodernism. In other words, you had Western thought was modernism before, modern before 1945, after 1945, after the atomic bomb, it was postmodern. And the atomic bomb was an event that had a significant impact on what the West believes. And uh, I said I'll go into this in detail in uh, maybe a, a little, in a later time in this later segment, but these are going to be left <coughs> the <coughs> full detail. <coughs> I going to be left, left until <coughs> uh, left for the, uh, the Insta vlogs when we start talking about things in more in depth instead of here. Uh, this will be a, a half-hour discussion on uh, black holes and uh, M-theory, and we'll talk about how uh, metaphysics can fit into this with, uh, uh, with agnosticism. So we'll, that's how we'll deal with it. But uh, this is sort of our general uh, ad hoc notes, and <laughs> these, these are the thoughts off, top, off the top of my head. Anyways, I'm done for now. My throat is starting to get bother me a little bit because of the, the walk. I'm very dry. So I've got to hydrate, uh, get some shorts on, and then go from there. All right, I'll see you. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Big Bang Theory Real's BTS vlog. Let me give you the time and date stamp. It is 2 hours and 16 minutes into the day of Saturday, May 21st, 2016. Yep, there is a, st a sentiment that says... There's no time like the present. I was wondering when to do this, uh, to do it now or wait to the end of uh, uh, what I have to do. And so I just decided to do it now. Right? There's no time like the present. So uh, today's been a bit uh, well. I went walk. I went to food shopping. I'm now having my uh, I have something to eat. I'm having some milk tea right now. That's my my standard milk tea. Just about 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, this one on adrenaline finally kicked off. And the uh, pain, the soreness from the walk uh, kicked in. And uh, the fatigue was such that I ended up just going to bed. 
but it wasn't too long. It was like about a five-hour sleep. It wasn't bad. Uh, so about 7.30 I got up, uh, started shuffling around, did some picking up, uh, pushed the vlogs out. Uh, well, the vlog, that the last, uh, yesterday's episode out, I did that. And now I'm filming the last clip that will go into the editing bay as soon, uh, uh, as, soon as this is done. I'm going to take the SD, card, the SD card out of the camera and put it into the computer and uh, move it on to the editing bay. So uh, hopefully uh, I'll have enough uh, footage to... Uh, make tomorrow's <laughs> episode. I mean, that's the problem. Sometimes I have too much footage and then other times I have not enough. Uh, so I've got to try... I, I'm, I'm sort of getting it, but it's sometimes I'm a little late or things are delayed or, you know, the usual. Uh, so, we're now moving... Oh, what was it? The last discussion was about a little bit about atheism. And I feel that it's uh, now time to sort of move past uh, atheism into agnosticism. And so we are going to talk a little bit more about atheism uh, 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 as we move into agnosticism. And it's simply because of the way the, uh, the terms are defined. Atheism says that there is no God, and then it's an absolute statement. It's, it's your finalized statement, so that there is no God. That's what atheism is. But if you're not sure about this, if if Heisen, the, and this has is what's happening, Heisen, Heisenberg on certain principles put, throws a monkey wrench into that, and this is the case with the Higgs boson. If the Heisenberg on printed a certain principle wasn't around, let's say they had defeated it, and this is what the whole purpose of looking for the Higgs boson, the whole Higgs person for, point of the Higgs boson experiment wasn't necessarily to find the Higgs boson, but to show that the mathematics that they had, the understanding in physics, was sufficient that they could predict where the Higgs boson would be. The problem is, when they did their work, they were off by 50%. 50%. Their equations were off by 50%. They had to do a lot of readjusting, a lot of recalculating. In, order. in other words, it wasn't, ah, there, exactly, bang on. It wasn't, you look here and here's, here's the Higgs boson. Uh, they had a. They, they took a long time to really sort of uh, find it. They found it. At least some of them they think that's the Higgs boson. Now, now named it the Higgs boson, but it wasn't the original. It's not the original equation that they thought it was going to be. Now, had it been the original uh, equation, they found it rather easily. Then you could say, okay, the Heisenberg on certain principle is now gone. They've have enough knowledge that you don't need the Heisenberg uncertainty principle anymore. In other words, knowledge is no longer asymptotic. You can now start stating there is fact. There is fact. But because they weren't able to do this, uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is still around. Um, you cannot state from an absolute fact there is no God. You can now only state it with it in the proper uh, quantum mechanics. You can only state that 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 there is probably no God, or you can only give it a probability for the existence of God. But as I say, you go down and look at uh, Newton's laws of motion and understand that not having a God, and this is not uh, stating that, the God, that God is a, a prime mover, in other words, in other words, we're not arguing about the definition of God, what God actually is. We're simply stating at this, from, from the physics point of view, that is there a God left undefined? Uh, and the thing is, if there isn't a God at the beginning of the universe, even to get things started, then the Newton's laws of physics, Newton's laws of motion, are violated. There isn't a conservation of mass, conservation of energy, paradigm in the universe, and there is. We see this particular, that there is this sort of, this paradigm, that we do we do see this balance. Uh, and even, even through in, into quantum mechanics, into relativity, uh, relativistic physics. 
uh, that the conservation of mass and conservation of energy are still there. In other words, Newton's laws project forward into quantum mechanics. The difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics, <coughs> classical mechanics being Newton Newtonian mechanics, and quantum mechanics being sort of Einstein and beyond. Um, classical mechanics don't exist, doesn't have a, they're not probabilistic, they are exact. It's only the quantum physics, the quantum, phys the, the, the quantum logic, if you will, brings you into this probabilistic universe. In other words, you cannot state things in quantum mechanics and quantum uh, logic with an absolute certainty. You can only say that you have an understanding of something and that absolute knowledge is, is asymptotic, so you never reach it. You reach it in a limit, and this is where you get into calculus, because the fundamentals of calculus is limits derivatives uh, and integrals, and I'm not calling you enough, this is the, the exact. This is exactly how you describe uh, knowledge in quantum mechanics. It's it's asymptotic. Uh, it's in the limit. Uh, and this is why I say I talk about quantum God because uh, uh, the definition of God that I have meets up with this quantum definition that God is not absolutely known, but uh, but is approached. The knowledge of God is approached in the limit. In other words, it has that that same quantum logic that you would have in quantum physics and in quantum mechanics. You have this for this definition of God. And ironically enough, it doesn't come up in the modern texts. It comes up in the ancient texts. As you sit down, you start doing reading, uh, and you're doing some of your translation from some of these old ancient texts. This is where you find this. And I will be going on and sort of describing this in, 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 in a uh, more significant manner than... I have done so far, and I think this and this will sort of take us from the atheism uh, uh, point to the agnostic point, saying, "Okay, <coughs> uh, the question of God is a pro is a probabilistic one. Physics shows that there, there has to be something in the beginning. So let's see if we can now go forward uh, in the agnostic's perspective and find a definition." For God, take a look at what we've seen his, in, historically for the agnostics. Uh, look at that, that uh, culture and religion. Look at uh, anthropology, and say, is there a definition that you can find that matches what we talk what, what we talk about in quantum mechanics now? I say I found one, but now, sort of, when you're doing the presentation, we're sort of uh, <coughs> taking a re look. We're re looking at this question again, and uh, presenting a presentation on this fundamental question. So, uh, I said, we're uh, moving uh, from atheism to agnosticism. That's where we're going to go next, for, particularly in our peripatetics. Uh, <coughs> and this will be coming up in the Bass vlogs. This is the Byzantine Antiquity Studies uh, vlog. This is where we look at, at uh, anthropology. This is where we look at archaeology and uh, all those wonderful things. So, uh, I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Alls BTS vlog. It's uh, just about two thirty now, and I gotta finish up. I gotta put things on because I have to. I have to be up and out of the pl uh, my place, so I'll be vlogging on the road tomorrow uh, by about uh, uh, eight thirty in the morning. So I will see you tomorrow uh, on the road. Democratic Earth. Earth.